Hey, this is Brittany Griner from the Phoenix Mercury, and you listen to the Three Point Conversion. BG Hayden Silly, PHNX Sports. Good to see you again. Um, on Friday, 18 points, four blocks. Today, 27 points, four blocks. Just how have you been able to find your rhythm this this quick? It's just getting back into it. Um, Getting back into it, just uh, practicing every day, going hard. Um, teammates believing in me, uh, just supporting me. Uh, you know that that means a lot. Um, defense, you know, like I said in that preseason game, my defense was horrible. So uh, I knew that was like my big focus uh, coming out. Because you can always, I mean, that's effort. That's that's, that's effort. Um, so just coming out and having a good defensive game, trying to have another good one, and then trying to get the offense going as well. Hey, Brittany, Eliav, goodbye to your right. Eliav, goodbye, Sports 360 AZ. So as Aiden mentioned, dominant performance today, but what do you feel like you add to this team off the court in the locker room? Uh, well, I mean, anybody that knows, you know, I'm a big kid. So uh, <laughs> I bring humor, <laughs> I think, off the court. Uh, I try to, try to get, you know, the team together, have them come over, play cards, Oh, sorry, trouble, all that, and uh, just having a good time. And that's, you know, you really start building that chemistry and, um, you know, learning each other uh, on the court, but learning them off the court, too. It just brings the team together you know, a lot better, uh, honestly, when, you know, you really take the time to care and, you know, just get to know someone. Now in the second half, y'all obviously tighten it up and tighten the screws a little bit. What do you feel like improved in the second half for y'all? Uh, I think we just all kind of locked in together a little bit more, uh, trying to tighten up the small things, not rushing, uh, just trying to find the best option. Uh, I think uh, we we definitely need to come out like that. We can't wait. You know, this league is is so good. Um, can't wait till the second the second half to to tighten it up because at that point you're really on a, a uphill battle. But if we can if we can do what we did in that second half in the first half next game and then have it consistently throughout the game, I think we'll be in a really good place. You know, it may have been a little dust in my eye. It was a little dusty. Um <laughs> but no, it was uh yeah, no, it was emotional in the back. Um just hearing, seeing some of the clips and then coming out. I mean, Vince, you set me up with that song. Oh my God. Oh my God. Um, but no, it was really good. It was really good. Uh, you know, part of the process of healing was, you know, just kind of letting it, letting it out. So uh it, yeah, nah, it, I got choked up a little bit, but tried to try to try to hide it, but I see you caught it. <laughs> that that was that was amazing. Um, I don't think I've played in front of everybody in one place, honestly, since like high school, honestly. So um, just having everybody here right now, you know, like I said before, didn't know when that was going to happen, if it would happen, you know, depending on how long it was, uh, it could it could have been a lot different. Um, so just having them here, just spending time with them, playing in front of them, that. That that got me choked up. Yeah, yeah, that one got me. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I never try to get tied up into, you know, all the, the outside stuff and, you know, trying to say, oh, I'm back. Um, granted, I did say that for that three, but, um, <laughs> um, but you know, starting off the game, that wasn't my mindset. My mindset was, you know, if I'm the first option, okay, I got to go score it. You know, if I'm not, then I need to get my player open or whatever it is. Um, but, I mean, it always feels good when the first bucket goes down. Um, so, but just getting, trying not to get caught up in all of that, you know, I let I let y'all you know set the stage for the matchups and the oldest and the clash of the bigs and all that, but I just just play.
I mean, you're you're so far away from all your your, your loved ones, people you know, people you don't know. And um, when you get those letters, uh, you know, you, you have some really bad days and you get hope. I said it before, hope's a dangerous thing, especially when it doesn't come through. But getting those letters like that, that right there, it makes you feel like you're at home. And then you know, it's just a, a nice touch. Uh, you know, we're just so tied to our phone and everything and just send texts or just put an emoji or something. But when someone actually takes the time to write a letter to you, it's so personal. You know, they took the time out their day to do that. Um, it's funny. I, just, I was like, how do you even write a letter anymore? <laughs> um, but uh, no, that 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 meant a lot. Like that helped me out a lot to just keep fighting, keep, you know, a whole lot. BG Lena Washington, 12 News Phoenix. We saw that some of you and some of your teammates got those custom pieces, hoodies, your button down from Jocelyn Hugh, a local designer. What did you think of your piece and the details that she kind of put together to make yours so special? Oh, it was amazing. Uh, I love my shirt actually uh, a lot. <laughs> um, you know, I had uh, pieces from my wife who, you know, I mean, she's the true MVP, honestly, uh, everything that she did. Uh, for me, but so having her, you know, graduation stripes on my shoulder was amazing. Um, the rainbow stitching, um, everything that went into it, every little fine detail, it was amazing. I mean, uh, killing it. <laughs> uh, BG, ESPN.com. You know, we always think of professional sports as a business, but the Mercury has never wavered in, in their support for you as a family member, not just as an employee. When you were drafted here, could you ever imagine that you would have this kind of love from a franchise and, and a community and how much has that meant um, with everything you've gone through and what you want to continue to do for the rest of your career? Uh, you know, when I got here, um, you could feel the love. You could feel the support. And any time that I, I ever came to the organization, um, you know, Challenge the valley and everybody to come out and help out on things. The hurricane in Houston, we had, we threw, I mean, it wasn't thrown together because it was beautifully done, but on a, a quick scale. Um, when I wanted to do a shoe drive and pass out shoes out of my car, and they were like, okay, let's, you know, make that a little bit safer and uh, <laughs> get more people tied into it. Uh, they they never said no. It was never well. Maybe maybe next year. No, it was always okay. And then full steam ahead. And um, you know when I was gone, I saw it on even a larger scale. And uh, I mean that's you know, that's why we made Phoenix our home. You know um, how could you not when you have so much love and support? People you know, people I've never met. Uh, you know the valley. We come together. Christian, in the New York Times, when you hit that three and you, you looked at the crowd and you, you told them you were back, what, what did that moment feel like for you? It was kind of like, originally, for me, I couldn't see that you said you're back, so I went on Twitter, but it, it felt like from there, like you were back, like you were leading the crowd, like you were like the conductor and everyone was yelling with you. Like, what was that moment like for you? Uh, that moment was very special, honestly. It, it took me back to my last season playing. Um, just felt really good, honestly. Uh, it, was a, it was a crazy moment. Oh man, they got me seeing all that. <laughs> Hi, BG Alexis Davis, Phoenix Mercury. And um, how does it feel to play for one of the only WNBA franchises that has an official name for its fan base? Uh, it means everything. Uh, you know, anybody that comes to this game knows, you know, the, the X Factor and everybody. Uh, you, you're gonna, you're gonna see here feel the intensity uh and it's every single night from the start of the game to the end uh the x factor shows up and they're going to be loud and crazy in the stands and all that so and we feed off that you know we really need that you know especially when there's low moments we need that we need that energy from everybody and you know being able to play for in front of them means everything to me i don't take it for granted that's true pretty robbie baker with uh, boston good to see you again you mentioned the emotion you felt in the pregame ceremony. What was it like trying to, to balance that and soak that all in while also knowing in a few minutes the ball's going to get tipped? You had to get your game face off. Yeah, um, I mean, just feeling it and then trying to, like, put it to the side, uh, you know, a little bit. <laughs> but, I mean, it's just a balancing act. Um, you know, with anything, I said it 
last time in media, you know, with any job that you have, you know, from the biggest to the smallest, whatever you have going on, you know, when you get to work, you got to work, you know, like my team depends on me, um, you know, fans want to see a good product out there. And, you know, it's my job to, to deliver that no matter what I have going on. Um, I have to leave it in the locker room, come out, do my job. So um, just kind of keep telling myself that. Yeah, you want to go first? All right, Jennifer, if I was going to ask you that, I was going to too, but since that already you they ask, um, can you just talk about um, kind of trying to reestablish some rapport with, um, with Brianna and Turner? Um, she didn't start today, and she hasn't taken any shots in two games. You know, how are you trying to encourage her, you know, and reestablish a relationship with her? Yeah, um, you know, we're trying to get it back, uh, you know, find the flow within the offense and, um, where we can, you know, get our little connection back. Um, just talking to her. I mean, Breezy's amazing. Breezy is a, a great, great player, and um, I love playing beside her. Uh, you know, it's just for all of us, we're all learning. You know, I'm, I find myself in spots where I'm like, oh, I shouldn't be here, <laughs> you know, um, so I can only imagine, you know, how it is team changing and all that um so just talking to her staying you know staying in her ear keeping her motivated and um you know it, it's gonna come it was, we'll see we'll see the bg breezy uh um you know two-man team for sure hey bg nick saletti from abc 15 what i'd like to know is you're an athlete so we know that your body is trained mentally you are trained as well how have you used all of this training to mentally get you to this point and now get you on the other side of this? Uh, you got to lock in. You know, every day I come to the gym, you got to lock in and uh, get going. It's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. Um, but, I mean, from the moment I started playing, you know, it, you got conditioned with that. Going to college, making it to the pros, playing overseas. There's always something at the Olympics. There's always something, you know, as much as we want to have a perfect season and not have any adversity or go through any, you know, trials, um, it happens. So each time you learn something new about yourself, you learn, okay, I can get over that. I can get over that hump. So then when the next thing comes, like, oh, I can get over that. I can, you know, I can you know, succeed. So just uh, remembering all those little moments and that, that got me here to get me past whatever is in front of me right now. Cassandra and I believe with Yahoo Sports, it's been a long emotional weekend and it's focused on your return. That's why we're all here. But do you feel like as that second half went along and as you yelled, I'm back, that maybe everything around you is starting to shift towards this basketball as you're playing for the first game and you're trying to get Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, we got the uh, first game, you know, done. We got this one done. Uh, we didn't get the outcome that we wanted, but I definitely feel like, you know, finally, you know, we can get basketball, you know. Um, and I hope all of y'all still keep coming out and covering this league. Um, not just, you know, the easy back home opener and you know, tension and all that. So we all keep coming out here to these games because, like I said, I'll say it many times, we have a great product in the WBA and we need all the coverage we can get. Like, y'all make a difference for us. So we need every single one of y'all here. question for me. You mentioned the how much did tonight, and this been a tonight, you think help with that healing process and continue to move forward? Um, no, it definitely helped. You know, there's there's a little stepping stone in each one. Is you know, one is doesn't it can be small, it can be big, but each one matters. And you know, tonight was quick, and you know, I felt home after all this and think about it and talk to my wife about it and all that. It's it's just all healing and you know, uh, get me to a better place. Um, we're now going to have a uh, special presidential envoy for hostage affairs, Roger Clarkson's up on stage with Brittany. He's one of the people who helped bring her home. And he's available for questions. Don't be shy. The media helped bring BG home. So you were a part of this. Well, uh, Lena Washington, 12 Sports, uh, what does this moment being in Phoenix for this moment mean for you and the whole administration? 
looked at it on a personal level. Uh, I was sitting there crying with uh, Sheila Jackson Lee, Congresswoman from uh, Texas, uh, when BG came out. I think it was a very emotional moment for both of us. But I can tell you from where I sit and where the team sits uh, in Washington, D.C., we knew that this day was going to come. We knew it was going to be hard. It would take some time. But what we saw today is exactly how I pictured it. BG home, Sherelle cheering her on, BG's family in the crowd, and BG back on the court doing what she does best, and that's playing basketball. Um, we know that the Mercury is entering the BG, our partner with bring our families home. I'm curious, the PSAs that we all saw throughout the game, can you speak to how impactful those those actually will be as, as you know, the thousands of fans in attendance see those every, every game that they're here? I almost feel like you were a plant because I was hoping for a question like that. So um, everyone seems to think that the U.S. government brings people home and we don't. What, what brought BG home, number one, BG stayed strong and resilient under some very trying conditions and exhibited character and leadership. But there's this whole team that brings people home. And the government simply partners with folks like Vince, with folks like uh, the Mercury, the X Factor, members of, of uh, Capitol Hill, congressmen, senators, their staff, the media, uh, civic society. We all partner together to find a way to bring someone home. And so I've had people ask, how many people have you been responsible for bringing home? The answer is always zero, because we in the government never bring someone home. It's everyone. And at the end of the day, the president's usually having to make some hard decisions. And in showing those courage to make those decisions and building off what we all did here together, we bring BG home and we bring others home. So in bringing the Bring Our Families Home campaign to partner with the Mercury, to get this message out there, Sherelle, how are you? Good seeing you. But to partner like this, that's how we increase the awareness. And the goal is that one day when an American's taken overseas, this whole nation mobilizes to bring those people home. Hey, it's Silly Peach and Sports. It's good, good to meet you. Um, Brittany's obviously talked about having hope throughout this whole process. How, in your opinion, did this administration continue to have hope throughout, you know, the setbacks, the hurdles, things of that sort? You know, part of it is, uh, to be frank, it's almost like we hire optimists to do this work. You have to go to bed every night knowing that you're failing 30 to 40 families because you've not brought their loved ones home. But just like BG said, it's just like basketball. When you show up the next day and step onto the court when in Washington, D.C., you still have a game to play and you still have to keep pushing. So there's no option in the government to never not have hope because at the end of the day, some people are expecting us to be that final entity that puts the ball in the net, puts the football into the goal. And so I, I, it's not really uh, a decision to not show up and play the game. It's every day when we come to work, we have to be at our best, no matter what's going on in our lives, we have to push that aside. And like BG said, when we step onto the court, it's game time, we have to execute. So uh, we're, we're in a way required to have optimism to get the job done. We'll go to Eliab. To you, right? Eliab, goodbye, Sports 360 AZ. Uh, what do you feel like you learned in the process of bringing Brittany home that you can help in bringing others home as well? I might go back to what I was talking about earlier, that uh, it's a team sport. Uh, there were times when I think the government could take uh, maybe 70% of the action, but we require Sherelle to maybe bring up a little more. There were times when the, when the Mercury came to the forefront. There were times when the ambassador downrange in Moscow was able to exhibit some more uh, I guess, energy or, or perspective. But when you bring someone home, it's never just the people in my office doing it. And to me, Brittany's case was kind of like a textbook example of that. And, and maybe I'll say one more thing. This is not only an example of how everyone comes together to bring an American home, an Olympian home, but it also showcases the fact that um, this is important to this nation. It's important to the president. It's important to the secretary of state, but it wouldn't happen unless it was important to everyone in this room. And whether it's BG or whether it's Paul Whelan, who still remains in Russia, or now Evan Gershkovich, who's also now in Russia, uh, we're not going to take our foot off the gas. We're going to keep pushing. And it's going to be us that eventually brings everyone home. We'll do one more. To, to Josh White, the ESPN. Hey, Josh. How would you describe, speaking of the process, either describe it or capsule kind of the whole thing, conversations, negotiations, how would you kind of wrap it up? Well, it usually starts off with um, accepting a case. At that point, like when, as soon as I took BG's case, uh, I pictured this day. I knew that this day was going to come. In a way, you kind of build back from there. You have to determine what is it going to take to get with the other side? What's the other side going to want? What can we offer? Every case is wildly different, but you're not alone. I'm not sitting there by myself trying to execute this. 
we have a government, the intelligence agencies, other diplomats, uh, people from as far as away from the, the State Department of Transportation or Commerce. Everyone in the government throws it in. But it's then reaching out to this broader community that sometimes the solutions become more clear, more apparent. And then once you start to smell that scent and get on the trail, you have to pursue it to its log logical conclusion, which is watching BG on the basketball court today. And it was just, you know, I'll tell you, I, I cried like a baby throughout that entire game, just watching him play. So I hope that probably just doesn't describe it as well as you'd like, but that's how it was. That's how it felt for me. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.